What was the uh, the point that you know that connection you had with music and and the fandom uh, turned into you picking up an instrument? It was immediate. As soon as I heard Kiss Alive, it was almost like it was mapped out in my head. And I started doing it. I started writing songs I did not know what to write about. I was five. So my interests at the time, which haven't really strayed very much, was uh, cosmology and astronomy and the planets and the solar system and the universe and all those things. Uh, and science. So when did you start Queen? <laughs> hmm? Cause I said, when did you start Queen? Cause that's like everything Brian May's ever done. Isn't he like a, an oh, yeah. astro, like a, oh, a yeah, rocket yeah. scientist? Yeah, love that stuff. It's, it's just so fascinating. It's, it's as big as you can get. I would write songs about the planets. And my first band was called The Solar System. And the first song- And at what wrote, age was this that you started uh, your first band? Five going on six. How the hell does that work? <laughs> I was maybe jumping around singing Barney songs at that point. I was putting my know. tongue in, in light sockets, like what, at five. <laughs> the thing is, I had nothing really to draw from. It's, it's like when you have music and you hear music, Everything that touches you in some way becomes a brick in who you are, in the structure that you are. Like a brick in the wall? <laughs> kind of, yeah. Similar. Only, no. And <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> <in there>, <laughs> Tear Very this funny. wall down! So, so what happens is eventually, after you've had a thousand things build you, Musically, you can make any combination of those things, like a little bit of David Bowie and Stevie Wonder and Dead Kennedys all come out in some riff that you come up with. For me, I didn't have those bricks yet. So all I had were the few things that I heard up to five years of age, six years of age. So the first song I wrote was a ripoff of Sweet Fox on the Run that had been currently on the radio and I heard it. So I stole the melody and I just changed the words to Jupiter is nice. <laughs> So it was just, let me see if I can get some sound on this thing. So oh, yeah. any- what an amazing memory. I would have no I- memory of that. <laughs> Do you notice how everybody like is a savant on our show? Like that's the other thing I thought was very interesting, Ron, was because you didn't say like you didn't go da 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 da. You're like f f f g. Like I don't even know what key I'm in anyway. Like nevertheless, with the weird gent tunings now, well, you're I- like, oh yeah, he did an F sharp there. Uh, that well, was I like the minor third. There is a reason I said that because if I sing the melody. I don't want suddenly like some algorithm to say, hey, you stole the song and you're not allowed to use it. We're shutting down your video. <laughs> I think so I said, F, 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 E, 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 You're beating the algorithm. But wait a minute, hasn't that happened to you? I think I remember you saying one time that he got you, didn't you get shut down on Instagram because you posted Sons of Apollo and they didn't realize that you had the copyright to your own song or something? Well, that's the thing is, is as far as sound recording, uh, when you're dealing with a record label and we're under the Sony umbrella, big umbrella, so you can have the PA form as the songwriter and the SR form is going to go to the record label, the sound recording. So they own the sound recording. Even if it's your song, the recording of it is theirs. And if you use that recording, you are breaking the law, breaking the law. So oh, that was so corny. Uh, <laughs> we need to go to Jupiter so we can run there with, with, with real copyrights. And, and I just said, see, I can't do that because the algorithm is going to pick it up and say, oh, you know, you might well, get this shut down because I said breaking the law like that twice. And then when me, you. So <laughs> yeah, that's, well, that's why you got to sing Jupiter rocks instead of sweet. And then they won't know. Right. So tell us about oh. the, the Jupiter song. So yeah, it's it's you know it's just using the melody. Oh, so follow to me. Which is you know fox on the. So it's just Jupiter is nice. Take my advice. I stayed on the ice. Jupiter is nice. And I started with the chorus, just like, you know, she loves you, yeah, yeah. See, I want to sing it. It's a better song than I've ever written. (laughs) So anyway, uh, yeah, so did that. And then it went to the actual first verse. Many clouds of gases, poisonous they are. 
Yeah, so that was one of the first songs. We had some other ones. I remember there was one called Smoke in Space. It was like, Big planet, smoke in space, stars in the Or just like a big snare, I would like to be there. And everything we wrote, uh, when I put a band together, which was my brother on drums and my neighbor John on guitar, and he sang mostly, and, and uh, everything we wrote was sort of Kiss inspired, because that's what we were into. So we had one song that sounded like, like Firehouse in reverse. It was like this drudgy, just like. Down, 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 down. It sounds like and up all night, sleep all day. <laughs> and, <laughs> so this, this is when you were five, six years old. <laughs> this is mm-hmm. happening. And were you yeah, singing or were you playing? Hmm? Were you at the time? Were you singing mostly, or had you picked up a guitar yet, or what? Where were oh, you at with that? Way too shy to sing. So I would write and I would sing when no one's around, just kind of whispering into my hand. But if there are any human beings around, I would immediately just curl up into like a little potato bug circle and just flick away. Uh, So, yeah, but I figured out how to multi-track record, which is you take a cassette recorder, you put it in the corner of the room. We have our little kid-sized nylon string guitars and we go to it and we play our guitars. So John's doing this. And I'm doing my, my riff. And my brother had a Bugs Bunny drum set he got from Sears. I still remember it. It had a picture of Bugs holding a carrot like a cigar saying, what's up, Doc? And, uh, and he was about 10 feet back. And he was playing distance uh, you know, for levels. And then we had, boom, we had our music on a cassette. Then we would have the cassette recorder and we'd take another one put it exactly about two inches away, no closer proximity effect is too basic. So put it right there and press play on this one, press record on this one, and we go like, and this one starts playing the music and we start singing next to it. Now this one is capturing the music and our overdubbed live vocals. So now we have our vocals and the music on this one. And then from there, if you wanna overdub more stuff or just make dupes, we, press play on this one that now has the music and the vocals or complete recording and record it onto here. And so, and if, you know, my mother's like, Ron, all dinner's ready. It's like, ah, because now it's in the dude. So we have to start over. (laughs) 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 In the recording. 